Hi everyone, my name is Matt, and welcome to a Hobby Hour tutorial set in the old world with beloved square bases. I have a small orc and goblin army, and I'll be painting some new additions in preparation for the old world's release later this month. My goal for this army is striking a balance between speed and quality. I want good looking results without spending a whole lot of time, so I'll be using an assembly line process with my usual contrast method. I picked up some Vallejo Express Color paints recently, and rather than make your typical review kind of video, I figured I'd use a few of them in this painting guide and share my thoughts along the way. The first thing I noticed is that the bottles need a good mix, and they don't have an agitator inside. It's pretty easy to add one. Whenever I build metal models, I save all the sprues and offcuts. They're great for weighing down bases, or in this case, mixing paint. Just cut a small piece, pry off the cap, and drop it in. I started with my favorite method of priming, which involves a coat of gray primer all over the model, followed by a spray of white over the top and sides. The result is a subtle, zenithal-style prime with gray on the underside blending to white on the top. Alternatively, you could apply a solid undercoat with white or wraith bone spray and get great results too. Normally I use a wet palette, but I like using this kind of plastic weld palette for really fluid paints like washes and contrast. It keeps the paint confined, and after it dries you can just peel it off. For the first stage, I'm painting a layer of Martian orange, and I'm applying it the same way I'd use contrast paint. It's kind of hard to paint one section at a time on these models. They're kind of like one big section. So I'm just working as quickly as I can to paint the whole thing before the first part dries. Since this kind of paint is transparent, if the first part dries before I make it back over there, the color will be darker where the brush marks overlap. I like to let the paint pool a little bit to create some shading, but not so much pooling that it runs off the model or drips. Look out for any areas with too much paint and soak up any excess with the brush. One thing I noticed about the Express Color paints is they tend to get a little bubbly in some spots. I don't know if it's something I'm doing differently, or if it's just the way these paints are, but keep an eye out for bubbles. If you notice any, try to pop them while the paint is still wet, either with the brush or you can gently blow on the model. Next, I painted a layer of plasma red all over the model. I painted a test figure to work out the color recipes, and the red on its own looked a little too strong. So I diluted it with some Express Medium, about four parts plasma red to one part medium. I painted this layer just like the first one, quickly and evenly, allowing just the right amount of paint to pool in the recesses. Spotted patterns can be a great way of adding visual interest to models, and here's a really easy way to do it. I put some velvet red on my palette and grabbed an old brush with relatively stiff bristles. An old toothbrush would also work. Dip the brush in a small amount of paint, and then use a finger to bend back the hairs and flick paint on the model. I went in a couple different directions and tried to concentrate the paint close to the spine. I let the paint dry, and then I went in with a small brush and velvet red paint. I painted some new spots and refined some of the shapes. I didn't want to spend too much time on this step, so I limited myself to about a minute per model. Next I painted all the mouths, gums, and lower lips with cardinal purple. Don't worry about getting any paint on the teeth, we'll be painting those with an opaque base coat later. Next I painted all the claws with black lotus. I wouldn't call it a black per se, but this is a really nice dark turquoise color. It's fairly transparent as well, and the claws will need a second coat. In the future I think I'll stick with the contrast black templar for painting black areas, but I'm sure I'll find a use for black lotus. This poor goblin is meeting an unfortunate end, but regardless of his circumstances we still need to paint him. I touched up the skin with white first and allowed it to dry, and then I painted a layer of orc skin.
Then I shaded the skin with Bealtan Green. I painted all the teeth and spikes with Xandri Dust. There are a few spots on the side of the mouth and the base of the spikes where I wanted to create some extra definition, and I painted a thin line of black. You can paint this wherever you feel like the model needs it. Next I shaded all the teeth with Skeleton Horde. Then I highlighted the teeth with bone white. Starting near the base, I painted thin, tapered lines along each tooth and converging at the end. Finally, I highlighted all the teeth with white following the same lines as before. Next I highlighted the gums and lower lips with some light pink. Now for the eyes. I wanted to darken the eye sockets a bit more, and Black Lotus ended up being a pretty good color for it. After that dried, I painted the eyes with Baylor Brown, followed by a dot of Dorn Yellow. Finally, I added pupils with black paint. I painted all the mushrooms with bone white, followed by a variety of colors, gloomy violet, agrax earthshade, and martian orange. The gloomy violet has a very uneven look. I'm not sure why, so I painted over it with gene stealer purple. And finally I painted the drool on the squid with griff charger gray. My old army has classic goblin green bases, but I think I'll change up the bases moving forward. I began with a coat of wood glue, and then sprinkled on some coarse gravel, followed by fine sand. After the glue dried, I painted the base with a thinned layer of rhinox hide, followed by a dry brush of steel legion drab. I base coated the rocks with dawnstone, and then painted a layer of agrax earthshade. I painted the rim of the base with rhinoxide, and then applied patches of static grass with superglue. And here's the finished herd of squigs. I had a lot of fun painting them, and I think I'll have to pick up some more. 
I'll be painting some night goblins for the channel soon, along with a variety of other cool models. So please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really helps the channel, and doing so will ensure you don't miss any future content. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy painting.